it's a wise person who looks to loved ones and old friends for that special guidance. And that's what our story's about on this episode of Still the Beaver. Glad I caught you. Not now, Clarence. I'm on my lunch hour. Forget it. Daddy wants to see us right away. Why does he need me around to chew you out? Huh. No one's getting chewed out this time, Theodore. Matter of fact, if my hunch is right, he's gonna treat us to the biggest lunch we ever ate. Your dad? The man who leaves company pens for tips? <laughs> he just got off the phone with the Merriwell people and he was very excited. They actually went for your proposal? Ooh, I still wish you'd let me look it over. Hey, this is my baby. I'm not going to share the glory with anybody. How's my tie look? I don't like it. <laughs> Hi, Daddy. Come in, boys. Hello, Mr. Rutherford. I'm glad you're here. I just got the word on the Merriwell account. So soon? Yes, and I must say I'm surprised by what I hear. I've just got to know which one of you boys put those figures together. Well, Theodore and I have done some fine work together in the past. But this baby is all mine. I should have known. You big oaf! You're the idiot that cost us the biggest account this company has. 28% of our free tax income down the drain. A common house pig with half a brain wouldn't follow things up this badly. Daddy, remember my asthma. How can I forget six years of asthma camp? <laughs> I think I treated you like my own son. I am your son. Don't remind me, you spineless jellyfish. <laughs> Excuse me, Mr. Rutherford, sir. What is it, Cleaver? Well, it's, it's about the Merriwell account. It really wasn't Clarence's fault. What are you talking about? Well, sir, you see, I made some last-minute changes in the figures that uh, Clarence wasn't aware of, so you can stop yelling at him. Is that true, son? Well, I... Uh, yes, he says so. Yes, it's true, Mr. Rutherford. 
I showed very poor judgment, but I'll do better in the future. What future? You're fired. Let's go to lunch, son. Yelling makes me hungry. <laughs> Gee, B, you really didn't have to do that. I never realized what a great friend you really are. Thanks. Thanks? I lose my job covering for you, and all I get is thanks? Hey, don't worry. I'll put in a good word for you when things calm down. Clarence, will you move it? For now, I wouldn't buy anything on time. <laughs> Coming, Daddy! You and J.J. Rutherford? I heard you practicing last night. No, thanks. Is that what that was? I thought maybe some cats were fighting. No, we're not going to be critical, Oliver. Remember, you didn't even try out for the talent show. That's because he doesn't have any talent. I do, too. I can make neat noises with my armpits. Want to hear? Oliver, didn't we discuss that last time Aunt Martha was here? Okay, troops, fall in. Oh, hi, Wally. Want some coffee? Uh, no, thanks, Mom. I gotta be at court this morning. Well, if you're running late, Beaver can drive the children to school on his way to work. I'm not in that big of a hurry. My client's guilty. Oh. Come on, let's go, huh? Bye, doll. Bye. Bye, love. Have a good day. Yeah, morning, Counselor. Oh, hi, Eddie. Mr. Haskell, would you like some tickets for my school talent show? Only if they're handing out air sickness bags at the door. <laughs> Ignore him, honey. I do. Bye, Mom. Bye, honey. Hi, good morning, Mrs. Cleaver. Hello, Eddie. And might I say, that's a lovely oven mitt you're wearing. Oh, well, thank you, Eddie. I always like to look my best for you. It does my heart good to see the fever sense of humor unaffected in the midst of young Theodore's latest tragedy. Oh, and I hope these provisions will help see you through the hard times. Eddie. You've been eating lunch behind the tar truck again? Oh, please, you don't have to hide your pain from me. We're like family. Eddie, don't say that. What's this all about? Wait, you mean the beef didn't tell you? Old man Rutherford gave him his walking papers. Beavers fired? Yeah, I got it straight from the lump. He's history. Out on the street. Adios, muchacho. Kaput. Ah, uh, but I'm sure the beef will bounce right back again. Oh, would you mind signing a receipt for this so I can deduct it as a charitable contribution? Well, now, Eddie, that's a very nice gesture. But we're not scraping the bottom of the barrel just yet. Uh, no breakfast for me. I'm off to the office. Oh, hi, Eddie. Oh, and Mom, don't hold dinner for me. I'm going to be working late tonight. You know, this reminds me of an old Alfred Hitchcock show. This guy got fired, but he couldn't tell his family. So every day for three years, he pretended to go to the office. One day, something finally snapped, and he went back to see his old boss again. I mean, this time, he had a bomb in his briefcase. <laughs> Have a nice day, Mrs. Cleaver. <laughs> Gus? Who's there? Who is it? It's me, the beaver. Beaver? You know, Gus, 
Beaver Cleaver. Oh, Beaver. Haven't seen you around for some time. Yeah, it has been a while. How school? <laughs> Gus, I don't go to school anymore. Don't tell me it's three o'clock already. <laughs> Gus, I graduated. I went to college and now I have two boys of my own. Oh, glad to see you made something of yourself, Beaver. What line of work you in? Well, actually none right now. You see, I've got a problem. I lost my job yesterday. Well, whenever you kids have a problem, old Gus has the answer. Come on, let's grab our fishing poles and head for Miller's Pond. Got any worms on you, Beaver? <laughs> Sorry, Gus. It's not that simple anymore. I'm out of work because I took the blame for somebody else. Now I can't even face my own family. <laughs> Gus? Who is it? It's me, Gus Beaver. What should I do, Gus? Well, you're big for a seventh grader. Why don't you try out for football? I just don't understand. I could have bailed out and saved my job, but I didn't even try. Well, if there's one thing I learned in all my years, it's that folks usually do stuff for a good reason. Well, I guess the reason was I wasn't really happy there. See, I told you, there's a good reason. <laughs> so then, I really didn't get fired. I quit. There you go. Thanks, Gus. It's been great seeing you again. Don't make yourself so scarce, young fella. Make one heck of a linebacker. <laughs> pretend we don't know dad's pretending he's got a job until your father's ready to stop pretending <laughs> there's your dad now remember he's been through a lot and he's probably feeling very low just about now daddy's home hey champ how you doing <laughs> hey worry <laughs> hey mom Hi. hey <laughs> Great news, everybody. I got fired. <laughs> oh, well, that is great news. Yeah, oh, yeah, sounds yeah, great, hey, Dad. That's terrific. <laughs> yeah, great. We knew you could do it, Dad. Uh, glad to hear that. <laughs> you guys don't seem very surprised. Well, actually, Eddie Haskell broke the good news to us this morning. Gee, what in the world happened between you and the Rutherfords? It doesn't matter. I can start fresh. New job, new challenge, the sky's the limit. Hey, Dad, why don't you be our school crossing guard? Uh, Mr. Sanders is colorblind, and he gets mixed up every time the light changes. Well, I'll keep it in mind, Ollie. But right now, I think I'm looking for a job that I'm a little more qualified for. Well, I hope you find one soon. I got a paper due next week on what my father does for a living. Oh, you too, do you? <laughs>
man does wear a cape at dinner. Oh, excuse me. I didn't know she was here. Come on over when you're alone. Okay, Oliver Cleaver. What is this? Why have you been so mean to me lately? Don't pretend like you don't know nothing, JJ. I'm not pretending. I really don't know nothing. <laughs> yeah, well, your dad made a real dumb mistake. And my dad took the blame so your dad wouldn't get into trouble. No way. My dad would never do that. Would so. Would not. Would so. Would not. Would Come so. on, would not. We're not supposed to fight in the house. Okay, Cleaver, let's go settle this outside. You've got problems. <laughs> oh! Hey, 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 what's all the yelling down here? Nothing you have to know about, Dad. Mr. Cleaver, Oliver's been making up stories about my dad, and I'm a guest in your house. Tell her, Uncle Wally. Tell her what Dad told you when I wasn't supposed to be listening. Uh, yeah, uh, well, um, JJ, I, I, I think that... Oh, I, I think I have to answer the door. <laughs> oh, hi, Lunk. Hi. Uh, are you ready, honey? We have dinner reservations at 7. Let me just get my book. Did you move yet? No. Why? Because my dad said you wouldn't be able to live with yourself. <clears throat> sure is dark out. Mm. So, uh, what's new with the law? Well, right now I'd say it's the only thing that's keeping Beaver from blowing up your car. <laughs> Give me a break. You know there was nothing I could do. I mean, it's a jungle out there. Dog eat dog, big fish eat little fish. Yeah, come on, who do you think you're talking to, Marlon Perkins? I know what happened over there. You were afraid to stand up to your father, just like you've always been. That's not true. When he told me to buy a blue Mercedes, I bought a red one instead. Yeah, when he was out of town. Look, it was the same thing when you were 15 years old and he made you take tuba lessons. You never did tell him how much you hated it. You know, you just can't talk to my dad the way you can talk to yours. Will you look at yourself, Lump? He's got you so afraid, you can't even admit the truth. Hey, you're bright. Boy, some people are so inconsiderate. Clarence? That's my little mushroom. Oliver says he let Mr. Cleaver get fired because of something you did. I told him my dad wouldn't do anything like that. It's not true, is it? What's that comes? About Mr. Cleaver's job. Hey, Tasty Comb. Why don't we stop and get a triple scoop of sprinkles, just the way you like it? No thanks, Daddy. Let's just go home. Hey, babe. You rejoin the ranks of the working class? Or are you still a burden on society? I'm still between jobs, if that's what you mean, Eddie. Then kiss the ring of the man who's gonna make life worth living again. Shouldn't you be out bribing a building inspector or something? Yeah, I take care of them at Christmas. But I got big plans for you, Beef. I want you to head up a new division of Haskell Construction. I want you to be my new corporate spy. I don't even like James Bond movies. No sweat. All you gotta do is show up wearing a hard hat and then squeal like a pig if you see any of my employees ripping me off. I don't even dignify that offer with a response. Think about it, Beef. Things in your field are rough. Hey, my brother-in-law, the sponge. He's been out of work for two years till I got him your old job. Eddie, uh, why don't you find some guy that's fresh out of prison to do your dirty work? Okay, Squirt. You got principles. Thanks, Eddie. You'll learn. Beaver, I thought I heard voices. Was that Eddie? Oh, you just missed him. Oh, that's nice. How'd the job hunt go? Mom, do you think I could raise two boys on a crossing guard salary? Oh, Beaver. 
You've only been looking for two days. Took your father almost a year to find the right job. But at least he finally found one that he really liked. Well, this may come as a surprise to you. But I can remember your father coming home after a long day with Fred Rutherford at the salt mines. He'd talk about striking out on his own. Sometimes I've felt that way myself. How come Dad never made the move? I suppose it was never meant to be. You know, if it wasn't closed for you boys, it was the college fund. And no matter how much he wanted to quit, the time was never right to take the risk. But maybe the time's not right for me either. Oh, Fever. When the time's right, you'll know it. Can I come in? What do you want to do? Make sure I'm not taking any office supplies? Oh, no. I trust you. <laughs> I just wish there was something I could do for you. Like, maybe a letter of recommendation or a low-interest loan. Anything. Till here, Cleaver? Might as well take your last paycheck. Save me the stamp. Thank you, Mr. Rutherford. Yeah, I'm sorry it had to turn out this way, Theodore, but I want you to understand I don't take this lightly. I liked your father because, well, he was a loyal friend, a hard worker, and a very average golfer. Too bad the only thing you inherited was the hitch in his swing. Daddy, you really shouldn't say those things about Theodore. Are you contradicting me? Well, in my opinion, he has a better business sense than most of the people in this company. But what do you know about it, you big lummox? If he's so good, how come he lost up the Maribel account? He didn't. I did. I can't lie anymore. I'd like to be able to look my daughter in the eye again. Are you telling me you lost the account, you big oaf? I'm not an oaf, and I'm not a lummox. I'm a grown man with a family of my own. We're all human. You shouldn't fault somebody for trying to do the very best he can. And another thing, no more tuba lessons. <laughs> well, what can I say except Takes a big man to stand up to his father, and a bigger man to admit his mistakes. I'm proud of you, son. Gee, thanks, Dad. You're fired. <laughs> fired? Cleaver? Welcome back. Teeing off at 3 o'clock. Care to join me? Uh, thanks, Mr. Rutherford, but, uh, no thanks. I really wasn't happy working for you. You're not supposed to be happy. You're supposed to be working. Well, you can call me a dreamer, but I'm going to try and find work where I can do both. Well, Cleaver, I respect your sunny optimism, no matter how boneheaded it is. <laughs> Gee, Theodore, that was a very courageous thing to do. Well, it was braver of you standing up to your father. <laughs> Terrific. I'm courageous. You're brave. We're both out of work. You know, Lumpy, I think you're looking at this all wrong. Oh, yeah? You don't make as much as I do. <laughs> Did. Sometimes you have to take risks, even if the time isn't right. But I've been thinking about going into business for myself. Maybe it wouldn't be quite so scary if I had a partner. You mean me? Us? Lumpy and the beaver? Sure, why not? <laughs> you know, maybe you got something after all, Beef. I mean, people respected your dad. That alone should bring in a few paying accounts. Who knows, we might even land a Marywell account. We know they're looking for a new firm. <laughs> then we're partners? How you doing? Well, 
Hello there, Beaver. Find a job? No. As a matter of fact, I started my own business. Smart move. These your partners? No, these are my sons. This is Kip and this is Ollie. How about that? Beaver Cleaver's boys. Live long in it and you get to see everything. Lieutenant Gus, we were wondering if you'd join us down at Miller's Pond for a little fishing. I'd really like that, Kippy. But I'm afraid I've made other plans. Her daddy's loaded. <laughs> 